Um, so I guess there's probably multiple parts to this question, but as we go into the conversation as a growth consultant, following what Josh and Nick have lined up for the last few months, in the prospects head, I don't think, I must not be doing it correctly because all, it's like all they hear is leads, 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 how can you get me leads? Especially when I was in the contractor niche, which is, which is a little, maybe the same or different. But how do you keep that from happening? Position Great question. Yourself correctly in the front end, but then if it does happen, how do you bring it back around again? Great question. So I tried to touch on this a little bit yesterday. Um, you know, it was a short amount of time, so I tried to give a lot of value and I didn't get to cover everything that I wanted to. But um, being in control of the conversation, right? One of the reasons that I ask those questions, one, I'm trying to get them to open up, right? That's that discovery, <clears throat> excuse me, exploratory phase where I'm trying to gain, gain the information that I need to be able to give them the solutions that they're looking for. Um, in my notes, I, I had it there for you, but I didn't, I don't think I articulated it well, so I'll try to do a better job of that. In that process, it's very easy to get lost in, I call it booby island, right? Like you start asking them questions, they start opening up. It's very easy at that point for an unseasoned rep or consultant to let the conversation spiral out of control and get lost in some, you'll spend 45 minutes without really understanding the direction, right? So for you, first thing, you have to understand, remember when I was speaking and I was telling you like that sales process, right? Working them through that process. There's also something called looping, right? It's called, it's a looping uh, um, transition. They ask a question, you answer the question, loop right back into the spot in your presentation where you were at, right? In your mind, you need to have a very clear set of understanding of where this conversation should be going. What's the next step? Where am I taking this, right? So that comes from first, your clarity. So I guess that would be the first thing, right? Clarity. Get clarity on what your process is. Get clarity on how that conversation should go. What does that framework look like? What am I doing next? What's that next call to action? If we remember when I asked you guys, if, if what, what do you determine uh, to be a successful call, right? And I asked some of you guys, what do you determine? And, and many of you said, well, it's to get them locked in on the next call. Okay, so what's after that? And what's after that? What is your process? So first, get clarity on your process, because you'll never get. If you understand what your process is, then there's some high-level techniques, right? Like I just talked about looping, right? They bring in a question or an objection, you handle it, you address it. Don't don't. Don't uh, stiff arm it, right? You have to, you have to address the 800-pound elephant in the room. Yes. Answer it well. Articulate the, their concern. Help them alleviate that concern, right? People make this decisions when they move away from fear, which is a concern. You address that. Give them the information they need. Give them the confidence they need to continue down their process. So clarity, clarity on your process. Understanding how to answer that objection and go right back into your thing. Did I answer? Does that make sense, Mr. Customer? Excellent. Okay, now and I take them back in that process. Okay. There's two tricks for that, you guys. How many of you, you guys have all heard that? That's exactly why I'm calling. That's exactly what we're talking about. It's a yes and. And then the other one is, if it, has anybody here ever heard of feel, felt, found? Yeah. Right? We, we do that all the time. All the time, right? I understand how you feel. Many people felt the same way. What Here's what I found. Is, and then go right back and talk what you're talking about. Yeah. A lot of techniques to do that. The feel, felt, found is an excellent one. Um, aside from clarity, Staying in control of the conversation. And that, and that kind of leads into what I was just saying, right? If you understand the process, you can be in control of that conversation. Don't let that conversation spiral and let them take control of the conversation and take you down a rabbit hole, right? Um, if they start bringing up the leads, hey, you know, I, I'll, I'll nip them right in the butt. If they just keep going back to like the lead, 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 hey, John, I, I get it that that's probably an important thing for you. But what I've found in working with many other clients is that I can bring all the leads in the world to you. But if you're not positioned properly to handle those leads, if there's not some automation built up when those leads come in, if there's not some other things that we need to discuss, I will break your business. I'll give you so many leads, I will put you, you, you will implode. I've done it before. I've broken many businesses. <laughs> True. <laughs> I break things all the time. I broke this phone trying to dial it. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. Many, many people, I, I've had clients come to me, some of my best clients, right? People, we talk about rapport building and relationship building. Many clients have came to me like as a referral or because I'm highly, like, you're, you've been highly recommended by so-and-so. They just sing your praises, blah, 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 because I kick ass for them, right? I deliver excellence. They come to me, they're like, hey, you get this thing for John. You, you, he, was on a, he was on a pay-per-click lead campaign. You were running his Google ads and he's just crushing it. And I got to have that. I need those leads. 
Okay, Mr. Johnson, that's great. So let me let me ask you a few questions. No, 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 man, I just need leads. I just want the leads. I just want the way we got. He said it was two thousand, three thousand a month to get started with you for the consulting, and then it's my spin. Do you do you take Visa? Do you take check? Trying to throw the money at me. Take my two thousand for PPC. John, hold on a second. I'd love to help you with the leads, but to be honest with you, here's what I need you to understand. I have a proven process and a system that works. If you will allow me, John, to lead this conversation, I promise to deliver you the best results. I've done this before. Many times, John, in my experience when working with clients, what I've found is that they may come in thinking that they need a certain thing, but after we do our consultation and our discovery process, we find together that what they really need is this and this, right? Here's an example, sir, I'll give an example. I had another client, a plumbing client. He said the same thing. I need leads, I need leads, I need leads. After we invested some time together in some of our consultations, we discovered he didn't need leads at all. He had plenty of leads. He, his bucket was overflowing and that was the problem. He had plenty of leads, but there were way too many holes in his bucket. Right? So I can keep dumping more water in this bucket, John, but that's not going to solve your problems. That's not what you need. Now, you're the, you're the client. I'll do whatever you want. If you just, and, I, and I'll tell them this. Literally, I tell them exactly like this. If you just want to throw money at me, we can do that. But I would strongly advise you, because I'm your advisor. I'm your consultant. I'm your advisor. I'm the expert in this niche. That's why we're on the phone. You called me. I would advise you not to do that. Because what you're going to find is that these leads are not going to solve your problems. You're going to be in no better position, probably worse, because it's going to create a mess for you on the back end, and then you're going to hate my guts. So I have to, t I have to in protecting you, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to protect you, Mr. J Mr. Client from making bad decisions based on the information that I know as a consultant. So I don't think that's the right play. I'd like to go through your information a little further and I'd like to find out exactly what, what makes the most sense for you. Here's what you need to understand, John. We can do anything you want to do. The answer is always yes. Whatever you want to do, yes. You're one check away from whatever, from whatever your heart desires. We can make it happen. If we can't do it, we'll find somebody that can. Yes, 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 yes. We can do everything. We can do everything. But does everything make sense? Probably not. In most scenarios, in most cases, probably not. Right, so what I'm really good at, John, again, if you'll allow me to guide this conversation in this process, this proven system that I know that works, we'll find out what you really need. And that's what I'm gonna give you. So that conversation, that little heart-to-heart -heart come to Jesus talk that I just gave that client, positions me as an expert, right? allows me to retain control of the conversation and allows me to guide that conversation, right? Because I know the path. I know what I'm doing here, right? I know what my next step in the sales process is. I know what we're doing here. Just let me guide this. This is what I do. When the plumber comes over, do you tell him how to snake the drain? Right? No. This is the polite takeaway is what he's talking about, right? Everybody here's heard the takeaway, right? <coughs> when you're selling, right? You, you can take away after they've paid. You can literally do a polite takeaway after they, like when they're a client, right? Because they still have to renew and you could be like, hey, maybe this isn't working out, right? Like, like we entered into a relationship assuming mutual respect. At least I was assuming mutual respect. Maybe we don't have that. I, I, it's, it's okay to politely tell somebody we may not be a fit for business. And every time you do that, it forces them to think about why they hired you, right? Like I, I used to love saying that to people. Like, you know why you paid me? I hope so. Maybe you didn't, and maybe you shouldn't have, and we can end this now if you'd like. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's really, it's really a mindset shift, right? Here's, I, th I said this yesterday, but I want to I get a little macroscopic on this, right? Here's what you and your minds need to understand. Remember, remember when we were talking about uh, rapport building, and I said I never call them Mr. Johnson or by their last name. I always call them by their first name. I explain why, right? I want them to understand we are on the same level. You're a business owner. I'm a business owner. We're doing business out of mutual respect, right? And an understanding. And it's important for you, the consultant, to make sure that you're, you keep that relationship balance in check because they will always encroach on that. Why? Because they're a boss. They're used to dealing with employees that do what they're told or that, hey, I'm the boss, baby, right? As a consultant, we don't ever view that. Nobody works for me. None of my people work for me. We're a team. We kick ass together. We're a collective. 
I, ne I never view myself as the boss. I'm not the boss. I might be the coach, right? Guiding, leading, the, the captain at the helm, but it's a crew that makes the thing happen. So that's my mindset. Their mindset is totally different most of the time. They're used to being in control. They're used to being the alpha. They're used to being the one telling somebody what to do, right? So it's important for you to always maintain that, keep that relationship in check. Calling them by their first name is one excellent way to do that, right? And I, I told you, I'm, I was raised by a Southern woman in, in Southeast Texas on the Louisiana border. If I didn't say yes, ma'am, I got a backhand. I know what manners are and I still um, live my life that way. But at the same time, it's very important that I set the right precedence with my clients and customers so that they understand the type of relationship dynamic that we have. Sir, I'm a business owner too. I have no problem. Sometimes you gotta have those little hard come to Jesus talks with them. Like, hey, hey, John, oh, whoa, hey. I hear what you're saying, but please keep in mind, like I'm, I'm not an employee, right? I own my own business too. I get to choose who I work with just like you do. I might not be for everybody. You might not be a good fit for me. And I don't be afraid to let them know that. You may not be a good fit for me. I do that in the sales process. Hey, we don't work with everybody. We don't have to, right? The, the purpose of this conversation is to find out if we're a good fit for you and if you're a good fit for us. Everybody's not a good client. All money's not good money. It's okay to tell people no, right? And if they can't understand that relationship dynamic, if they try to view you as an employee and abuse your, um, your time, and, and there's a lot of times where the clients and customers will try to encroach upon you. And it's very important in that relationship building process that you're always keeping that relationship balance in check, right? So controlling the conversation. Sometimes I have to have a little hard stop with them. Go, hey, I hear what you're saying. But what I found from doing that is this might happen. So ultimately, you know, you're the client. If you'd like us to do that, I can do that. But I would, you know, if, if it were my business, I say that all the time. That's a great framing question, right? You're demonstrating right there. You're showing them. And that's what I do. Even in the, pre I, I say this in the, in the sales prospecting, in the presentation process, in the fulfillment and, and discovery calls, in the consulting calls, I always say this because it's true. This is how my mind works. If I work with a business, just like um, yesterday, we were talking about that solar panel, panel opportunity, right? The reason that idea came to me like lightning speed, it's instinct for me. The first thing that I do is I always put myself in like if that were because I ran so many businesses. I've had a magazine, I, I had a, a TV show, a radio show, a consulting company. I, I had a clothing line. I did like I've done all kind of stuff, right? So for me, it's just simple as putting myself in their shoes. I'm Joe Plummer now. That's everything. Everything that I do with that prospect, client, potential client. Everything going forward comes from that mindset. This is my business. What would I do to help this business grow? And I frame it that way. Well, John, if it were my business, here's what I would be doing. 